Bailey. Yeah. They ruined video games. Worst of all, they ruined The Last of Us. And Peter Dinklage. Oh, I want him to die in Game of Thrones now. This is our review of Pixels. It sucks! I'm Cameron Vlad. My good friend Bailey Deal. You don't even need to watch the video anymore. I mean, if you just wanted the opinion, there it is. Yeah. It's horrible. Don't don't waste your money. The story. I'll have to do the story because my partner here decided to use the restroom a couple times. Twice. This film. Twice, which is a new record for me. Usually, I just go once during a movie that's okay and I enjoy. Or, or like if I really like it, I don't go at all and I hold it in until I explode. But twice. That's how bad this movie is. I concur. I don't ever get up to go to the bathroom if I pay to go into a theater to watch a movie, and I even did, so that's pretty bad. Okay, so, Pixels stars Adam Sandler and Peter Dinklage and Kevin James and... Josh Gad. Josh Gad, who is the only person I like about this movie. We'll get into that later. Oh. Oh, and Sean Bean. And Sean Bean, very briefly. And Brian Cox, and is directed by Chris Columbus, not the person who founded America. I'm sure that joke has been made a billion times. So Goonies! 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 Goonies? He did Goonies and Mrs. Doubtfire, his two big ones, and Whoa. the first two Harry Potter films. I, I mean, he's got a pretty good rap right there. And then he makes Pixels. So the story is, a couple years back, a fantastic short film appeared online. I'll put a link in the description because it definitely needs as much exposure as it can get because it's so good. Short film was video games burst out of a TV, very pixelated looking, and start blowing up a city and turning buildings and cars into pixels. This is what we wanted. This is what we wanted out of the movie. But go ahead. And pretty much the plot of the film is vaguely based on that. Sum up in one sentence. Adam Sandler and his friends are fighting aliens that are taking the form of video game characters. Because they're pros. So, Bailey, I feel like there's probably not a lot of good in this movie for you, based off the fact that you've been blurting out every five seconds about how bad this movie is. Yeah, I know. It's but just for <laughs> bursting out of the seams of every, like, crevice in my body. Okay, so, I'll start it off, because... I feel like there's something important to say about the good. Try to just reel in that anger for reel one moment. Reel in the anger. And just find that little bit of sunshine. You, okay, I want you to rewind and just slap good-ish on that thing. Okay, anyways, let's get back to this. So, the good-ish part of the movie. For me, it would have to be the moments where you actually see the video game characters coming down and attacking. That's what I wanted to see out of this movie. Whenever I saw the movie's trailer for the first time, I was like, this looks pretty cool. And then it got to the part where it shows Adam Sandler, and I go, oh god, no. And that's exactly what this movie is. You watch it, and you think the video game sequences are cool. Someone actually put time and effort into making these video games come to life in a creative way. And that's the worst part about this movie, is that someone poured their heart and soul into this, and it's just wasted in this bad movie. And, oh god, it's horrible. It's just, it's, it makes me sad. Okay, I said reel it in. I said reel it in. Sorry. I, I, reel I, it no, in. no, no, no. I'm reeling it in. I'm not angry. I'm <laughs> sad. I'm being sad. Okay, well, we're talking about the good right now. Good-ish. Right now. Like I said, the good-ish parts were definitely the aliens as the video game characters. Which, you know, it's great, but there are definitely some, you know, problems with it that are just kind of you know, nitpicky more for me. Uh, the best, best part, I would probably say, would have been the Pac-Man scene, but also that I'll cover that in the worst, so. For me, the only thing I would even describe as good 
would be Josh Gad's I, performance. I thought you were going to say that. I almost wanted to chime in and say Josh Gad at the same time. Yeah. Um, oh. He's legitimately funny, even though, honestly, for some reason, the writing, which is horrible through this entire oh movie, God. suddenly becomes somewhat creative and funny for his dialogue. Not, not every time he talks. There's a lot of times where his lines fall completely flat. The theater oh. was silent through about, like, 75% of the jokes in this movie. Of that 25% of jokes that were laughed at, a large majority of them were delivered by Josh Gad. He is very funny, he's very charismatic, he's just enjoyable, he makes you smile, he makes you laugh, which someone in a comedy should do. And, you know, what I would say about the action scenes, they're okay. While this movie is bad, they are decent, but I would not label them as a good aspect of the film other than one moment in the Pac-Man scene. Okay, so now the fun part, the bad. <laughs> I love it. Let's go. I think you seem very excited, so I'll let you get that out right now. Okay, so the bad. You don't need to put bad-ish for this one. I'm just gonna go out and the say bad of the bad, the, the bad, worst of the, bad. the worst, the horror, the horribleness. It's just there's so much that's bad. The jokes fall flat. Like, let me just cover this really quickly. A majority of the time that, you know, there was something somewhat funny, like someone said something. Cameron and I both did like a face palm. I I and just was kind so, of it was a. It was a combination between facepalm and anger, so I would just go like this, and I just couldn't stand it. We both were doing that. And at the same time, there was just a group of people. I questioned their intellect. <laughs> just because it was just Cameron and I going, oh god, that was so stupid. And then they're like, oh, Adam Sandler's so funny! <laughs> I don't know, like their brains just melted out of their heads. Anyways, that's that's not even the I think, I think it's important to explain why it's so bad, the humor. They're not really jokes as much as they are just sentences that are intended to be funny, but you just go like... I don't it even... pauses! The movie pauses for laughter, and then you're sitting there watching people standing in a room. You smell great, like the book of Genesis. That's a joke. That's a that joke. That was a joke. joke. That was a joke. Movie. And it was delivered joke. by Josh Gad. Exactly. The guy we just said is the best part of this movie. The first example we have of a bad joke is delivered by him. So. You smell really good. Like the Book of Genesis. It's funny now. And then, you, you know, it, you know, but... even the people who were laughing at all the stupid stuff didn't even laugh at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. The worst part about it for me was definitely the lack of structure. I was expecting video game action with a little bit of comedy to make this film somewhat tolerable. It just moved from, you know, being like this, oh no, aliens are attacking, and then suddenly they're, they're, they're throwing a ball in the middle of it all, and it's like... Where'd that come from? Did they mention it before? No, they're just going to the ball. I just killed a bug. Uh, but, you know, it just, it, it was like that. You know, something like that. Just something very remedial suddenly changes the whole structure of everything. And, you know, I was expecting more. And even from that Pac-Man scene that I love so much, I was expecting something cool. They were based in New York City. A giant maze, and they're driving cars based off of the ghosts, chasing Pac-Man through the city. And they only utilize the maze aspect, like, in one moment where you look at a screen. But, I just thought that scene could have been exploited more as a Pac-Man game with a maze. And they didn't even do that. It was just a car chase mm -hmm. against a giant computer animated Pac-Man. And it was really nothing special. There was no real tension except for in the one part. The one part of that scene. We're not going to spoil it for you because... At the well, ending. Uh, to be specific, the, it's the, the very, ending. very ending of the Pac-Man scene. Of the Pac-Man scene. scene. Which, 
I'm pretty sure someone will put it on YouTube. At least that scene alone. I guarantee you, you'll find it on YouTube so you don't have to watch the movie yeah. to see that one moment. But it just, it didn't have any structure in any aspect of it. Not even the plot, not the action scenes. Just no structure whatsoever. To go along with that thought, what a lot of people say, a lot of film critics say that makes a great action scene is you know exactly what's happening with multiple characters happening at the same time. Things just happened in that Pac-Man scene. They would just ha suddenly have him cornered and get him and just happen and just things... Yeah. Or just or just happens to be a power block thing that he eats that allows him to eat the ghosts. It hurts like, my head to even just, think about this scene. It just happened to be <laughs> right there. Like, they had him cornered, but he still managed to get a thing and chase him down. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to quit harping on that scene. Because I totally agree with every single thing that Bailey just said. And to list off a few other bad things... Oh, it's horribly uncreative. Oh my god. You can guess every single thing that happens. Peter Dinklage is dreadful. Even though he's a very good actor, he is dreadful in this. Wasting away. There's no tension during any of the action scenes other than... That one, one part. At the ending of the Pac-Man scene. But what my main focus, I think I'm going to focus on for what I really hated about this, is there's just no focus on what this movie is trying to be. B. I think that's the root of all this bad. You have ranging from honestly some of the worst swearing I've ever seen in a PG-13 family movie, which obviously is not a big deal for a PG-13 movie, but for one that's supposed to be a family film, it's very unsettling, especially with the subject of some of the jokes. It's just kind of upsetting. But then... The, everything outside of those adult jokes, which sometimes you get a pretty good adult reference that made me laugh. You get some good jokes in there. But for the most part, it's very cliched, very predictable, and very childish, like a kid's movie. And normally that's a decent argument for a film that it's for kids, don't judge it so hard. It's PG-13. This movie is PG-13. Its target audience is not necessarily kids. It's more like the people who played the games in the past and are familiar with them. And even then, I don't even think those people would enjoy it. Anyone that played video games in 1982 have seen this movie a hundred times every year. So, there is no target audience for this movie. No one should watch this movie. No one should see it. No one should pay to see it. I hate to knock down someone working in the industry that I love, film. I think Chris Columbus has a lot of great work. I think Adam Sandler's even made good movies. I think all the actors in here deserve much better than this. Don't even <laughs> see it. I Don't rent it. Don't go to your, like, dollar movie theater to see it. Don't, I mean, I wouldn't even recommend it to go see it for free. It's just... It's that bad. I work in a movie theater. I'm not gonna go see it again for free. Like, that's how bad it is. It just... It sucks. It's horrible. Final thought for me, I would say entertainment. <sighs> That's a tough one. Somewhere on the line between D plus and C minus. Because for me, th this movie's on the line between really horrible film that is almost insultingly bad and just forgettable bad. It's right. It's it's swinging back and forth for me. So I can't quite pin it down yet. So that's why it's a D plus or C minus for entertainment value. For uh, acting, D. The only thing keeping it from being an F is Josh Gad. And for story, I just give it an F. F. Oh, F. Like. Definitely. That's the first F I have ever given on a review. Oh my god. I overall. This movie's a D minus. I wouldn't even stretch to make it a C minus. Not even a stretch to a D plus. It's just borderline F. There are just a few good things about it that I enjoy, such as like the introduction to these aliens. But overall, across the board, D minus borderline F. Uh, um, um, to my to the adults watching this, two middle fingers way up. 
way up there. You can't see them because there are children probably watching or people who respect me and or him. And I just don't want you to see that. Did you know that pixels cost $110 million to make? While Jurassic World, one of the biggest movies of all time now, at least financially speaking, was 160 to 180 million dollars. That's a fraction difference between those two movies. I can't even... I just... Mm. Ah, it makes me mad. Makes me mad! Makes me mad. Just don't spend your money on this movie. Because if you do... <laughs> Pac-Man will eat you. I appreciate it if you didn't eat. And that's how that's how we'll end it. Yeah. Like, Sounds good. Yeah. Oh man, there was a thick <laughs> glaze <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> I wanna watch that. Okay. Immediately calls Adam Sandler. Not does he go to the military? No.